intro to holonomic drive. You can see that the wheels on holonomic drive are oriented in a different fashion. They're at a 45 degree angle where they would normally be. And to go forward, we're going to have two wheels on the sides go forward and the front and back wheels not move at all. To go directly to the right, we would have the two side wheels not move at all and the top and bottom ones move in that direction. If we were driving straight forward, that would be a zero degree heading. Driving directly to the right would be a 90 degree angle and would be called a 90 degree heading. Let's say we want to move at a 45 degree angle. Well, we have no wheels pointing in that direction, so we need to figure out how to make our existing wheels work together to move in that 45 degree direction. The top and bottom wheels, the front and back wheels, are going to have to move directly to the right, and the blue ones are going to have to move forward an equal amount because it is a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 right triangle. All right, this is the last example and the most complicated, and it will show us how to figure out how much each wheel should turn. Let's say we go on a 30 degree heading. That's going to make a 60 degree right triangle, 30, 60, 90. The front and back wheels are going to move a length equal to the short leg of that triangle. And the side wheels need to move a longer leg of that right triangle so that the whole robot will end up moving in a 30 degree direction. Now hopefully if you've had trigonometry this is looking a lot like the unit circle. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 1. The short leg is a half, and the long leg is the square root of 3 over 2. Now we have trigonometric functions to figure this out for us, so we don't need to draw the unit circle over and over. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, and the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So it looks like our red front and back wheels will be the sine function and the blue side wheels are referring and using the cosine function. So to program this in LabVIEW we get a motor for each of our pair of motors. This first one can be for my front and back wheels and this one can be for my side wheels. And this also matches up with the wiring of my robot. The front and back motors are wired in parallel into the same motor controller port. Now we need to take that heading that we're going to give our program, that's going to be one of the inputs, and then the other one is going to be the power that we want to feed to the motor. So we need to give a direction and a power. We're going to probably use a power of, let's say, 100, and we can start with a heading of 0. Now, the heading is going to be in degrees, but the sine and cosine function in LabVIEW needs radians, so we need to convert degrees to radians. So let's try an example, changing 30 degrees to blank how many radians. So you take 30 degrees and you divide it by 180 degrees. And you set that equal in proportion to something out of pi. Because 180 degrees is the same as pi. To solve for the missing radians, we do the opposite. We're dividing by pi on the right side, so we need to do the opposite and multiply both sides by pi. So that ends up equaling 30 over 180 pi, or if you simplify it, 1 -sixth pi. So the process is going to be the same when we program it. All right, so we need to divide the heading by 180, 
and then multiply by pi. You may even have a constant built into lab u4 pi. Now we want to find the sine of those radians, the sine of that angle, and give it to the front and back wheels, and we want to give the cosine to the side wheels. Now the sine and cosine values we get back are between negative 1 and 1. They're not enough to power the motors. We need to multiply those values by the power that we chose before. Once we have those products, we wire them into the move DC motor blocks. Now, if you are going to have a holonomic drive robot, you're not going to want to redo this code over and over. So what you're going to want to do is turn it into a sub VI. So change your inputs like heading and power into controls. If you want, you can also create an input and output of the pink NXT wires. And then finally, you're going to want to turn the motor information into, into, into controls as well. What you need to do is right click on the wire and create a control. You can't convert the constants into controls. Wire those up. give them good labels then hit command E or control E to bring up the front panel and you'll see in the upper right hand corner of the front panel the pattern and you need to connect wire the portions of the panel to the inputs and the outputs Then if you want, you can even edit the icon. I would suggest that you do so that it makes your program easier to read and understand. When you're done, now you can open up a new program, select a VI, find where you saved that VI, that holonomic drive VI, and you can use it in other programs. So I can turn on my motors, have them drive for a certain amount of time, and then stop. Alright, now I need to give my inputs into my holonomic drive. I give my two motors. I need to give a heading so I can create a constant. I also need to give a power so I can create a constant for that as well. Now we're ready to test it out. All right, so the heading set at zero, the power's at 100, but let's try it with 30. I'm going to play it and see what the robot does. It should be driving forward on a heading of zero. Let's see what it does. Let's change the heading to 180 so that it drives straight back. Let's play it, see what it does. It does good. Let's change the heading so that it will go to the left. So 270 degrees. It goes to the left. Let's go back and do 90 so it should come back to the right. Now let's try out something a little bit more complicated. Let's have it drive forward at 45. So it's moving at 45 from the straight forward. Let's make it go back to 225 degrees. Comes right back to center. And then let's try and finish with 30 degrees. Okay, it works.